call the front bench. Patricia Gibson. Thank you, Mr Chair. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship and I would like to congratulate the Honourable Member for Strangford for securing this debate today. And what we have witnessed today, Mr Chair, is that there is common agreement in most elements of this chamber today that there is a problem and there is a particular problem with these machines and um, fixed odd betting terminals for those who um, are seduced and vulnerable by the promise of easy money by these betting terminals and they lead people into all sorts of difficulties. In my own constituency of North Ayrshire and Arran um, there are, and the neighbouring constituency, there are 135 of these machines and bookmakers uh, where gamblers racked up losses of more than £5 million in the year to 2015. This, Mr Chair, from constituencies to constituencies with some of the most deepest pockets of poverty and deprivation in the entire United Kingdom. My own and the neighbouring constituency host 37 betting shops and that spend of £5 million is set to increase with campaigners um, expressing deep concern about this. And this is a problem um, that is posed to some of our most vulnerable people in communities right across Scotland, right across the United Kingdom, people who struggle with gambling and are drawn in by the glamour and glitter and the promise of easy wins for the hollow thrill that these machines offer. They promise so much and deliver so little. And we've heard today that um, vulnerable players are, are perhaps gambling as much as £100 in 20 seconds. And who, Mr Chair, can afford to sustain such losses without facing huge difficulties? Um, no wonder it is called the crack cocaine of the gambling world. So far, the approach of the gambling industry has as we've heard earlier today, um, has been about self-exclusion. But we know that self-exclusion doesn't work. And research has shown that around 22,000 self-exclusions in 2012-13, um, two-thirds of those who self-excluded cancelled the exclusion after the minimum period expired. And as the Honourable Lady for Congleton has pointed out, this is an issue of social justice. And it's clear that the particular dangers of these machines, um, with so much money being lost so quickly, um, uh, shows there is a problem. And it's not a problem we can continue to stand aside and watch continue and develop. Um, the casino industry has given evidence to the Scottish Parliament that these machines are a hard form of gambling and are completely unsuitable, as we've heard from other speakers today, completely unsuitable for the unsupervised environment of the bookmaker shop. We know there needs to be more research done. We've heard that today. There needs to be more research done into policy going forward. What we need is for play to be safe and enjoyable. And the Responsible Gambling Trust um, uh, has said there should be for further studies so that we can target problem gamblers um, with informed research. And it's time the government looked at the recommendations from the Responsible Gambling Trust in this regard with these machines. We've heard today about inconvenient truths. Well, my, Mr Chair, I would like to point out an inconvenient truth. We have all seen streets, usually in socially disadvantaged communities, with bookies after bookies on each street corner. And despite what the Honourable Member for Tewkesbury had say, has said, 55 of the most deprived boroughs in the entire United Kingdom have more than twice as many betting shops as those in the most affluent areas. That, I think, is an inconvenient truth. And too many local authorities feel absolutely powerful to stop this clustering, although the Scottish Government has taken action to tackle this um, through planning policy. The claim that the betting industry... Um, the betting industry has said that to reduce the maximum stake from two pounds, sorry, from £100 to £2 um, would put betting shops at risk. Like the Honourable Member for St Hel Helens North, like the Honourable Member for St Helens North, it's a little known fact that I too once worked um, for betting shops, for two high street betting shops to put myself through university. Um, working in just about every bookmakers in Glasgow, in and around Glasgow, and I can tell you categorically um, that there were no football betting terminals at that time. And I can assure you, profitability for a bookmakers was never an issue. And the situation now is we have around four in each shops. But Mr Chair, I want to make a very important point today. There has been an attempt 
um, to make uh, political points on this, which is, I think in this debate is utterly inappropriate. But the point has been raised and therefore must be answered. It has been put forward that the SNP did not put forward any amendments in the Scotland Bill with regards to these mach machines. And I can tell the, the honourable gentleman who raised that point that that is utterly untrue. But perhaps he was so busy working against more powers for Scotland with his Tory allies that he missed it. Uh, I, can tell, I can tell the honourable gentleman that the SNP, the SNP put down an amendment, clause 45, page 47, on the 4th of November 2015, and it was not taken. And it is true that some power has been devolved under the Scotland Bill, but what the Scottish Government is not able to do under these powers is to retrospectively re-examine the licences for the number of betting terminals that are currently already available. And it is actually the way that the powers have been devolved will create confusion because there will, in effect, be a two-tier system. We know that this is an issue, Mr Chair. We know that we need to tackle this going forward. And if one thing comes out of this debate today, I would ask the Minister to seriously consider making the maximum stake £2 so that people can gamble with much more safety and with much more responsibility and being less open to being preyed upon by the riches that these machines mistakenly offer to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye,